Sure. I agree with you. Can I switch gears? Yeah. I got to ask you about Fuck something. Fuck yeah. Ask me about anything. Joey Diaz. <laughs> Tell me everything. How did you meet Joey Diaz? Because then I want you to ask me this. I okay. want you to ask me what my experience with Joey. But how did you meet him? How did he come into the fold? I met Joey Diaz in the late 90s uh, at the Comedy Store. I think I met him in like 96 or 97, something like that. Uh, right when Joey moved to LA, we just started hanging around the comedy store. We became friends, and then uh, I started taking him on the road with me, like uh, the late '90s. Okay, and we've been best friends forever. So, I know of Joey. I don't know Joey. I've never met him. You never I've, met Joey? Never. I call him up right now. TV and the whole bit, and you know, I know him from you from you, him. and I see your podcast and all that. But and he's in the circles. He does some jujitsu. He's funnier than hell. And he's a gangster, so I like him, but I don't know anything about him. So he comes on my podcast. Now, he has a podcast, so of course my opening line to him is, hey, how'd you get into podcast? Right, I'm going to put, he's, here's your plug for your podcast, and we're going to go on and talk about my agenda. So I say, Joe, I say to him, Joey, how'd you get into podcasting? And his response, you know, Chael Sonnen, he wouldn't call me Chael. It was always, you know yeah. what, Chael Sonnen? He still calls me Joe Rogan. <laughs> I mugged a hooker down in New Jersey and set her, li- uh, set her wig on fire. And it's like, okay, we got to, there's two moving parts here. First off, that is, I don't know how that answers my question of how, but now I need to know the story here. So he ties it all together with, so he went on something, just something he got an appearance. He told the story of mugging a, her, a hooker in New Jersey and setting her wig on fire. And all of a sudden he blew up overnight. He goes, yeah, I realize people like those stories. I never knew that I had stories from the part of the country I'm in and the neighborhood I grew up in. I thought everybody had these stories. He's like, chill, son. And I thought I'd tell you I mug a hooker and light a wig on fire. You go, yeah, well, I, I mug 10 hookers and let 10 wigs on fire. He's like, I didn't know I had stories. And then it just goes from there. And he starts telling me about... So, so, so he, he ends up doing two years or 18 months. And I said, well, what kind of jam did you get in there? And he said, well... I was actually, I was doing the cop's job for him. You know, the cops don't want drugs on the streets. I, I went and took two kilos off the streets for him. <laughs> this is how he presents it to me. And he goes, yeah, you know, the, the, the two kilos wasn't as big of a deal. Oh, he said, oh, so I, I, I robbed two kilos. He goes, and you know what else, Chael Sonnen? I just happened to have a machine gun. <laughs> and I go, well, I can see where that happened. He goes, yeah, sometimes you just back into a machine gun. I had a machine gun with me. And he goes, but it's funny. I wasn't in trouble for the gun. I really wasn't in that much trouble for the drugs. What they were upset about was the kidnapping. I'm going, okay, what jo- What happened here? This is my intro to the guy. I'm like, what, what in the hell is this story? You probably know the story, but I didn't. So he tells me the whole story, and he says, yeah, but, you know, kidnapping's kind of a weird charge. He goes, when you and Vandalay got in that scuffle in The Ultimate Fighter, if I come and grab you and I take you into the next room just to cool you down, taking you into a room against your... That's kidnapping. So I think, like, they got him on a technicality jam, like what they're doing with Frank Mir, some of these guys we're talking about. And I said, oh, okay, is that what happened? And he goes, no, I, I duct taped the guy who was in my trunk, and then I held him in the house for a week before I let him go. I'm like, well, then why did you tell me? Why did you bring up the initial example of taking me next door and cooling me down? What did that have to do? I still don't know. Because he's crazy. It's funnier than hell. And I asked, yeah. so I was trying to talk like some, see, I try to do more of a Joe Rogan experience. You're, you're my idol. I try to do my show the way you do yours, but I'm not there yet. It takes a while to build that audience. So I got to stick on MMA and pro wrestling. I got to really stay in, but I don't want that. I want just, I want to just talk. Well, you could just talk. You, you definitely could just talk. Well, as I bring these guys in, I'm trying to do a little more of that. I go to TMZ. I see the local stuff. I try to ask them pop culture questions. So I dip my toe in politics with Joey. Obama had just made this new rule of going to any bathroom you want. So I asked Joey about that and he goes, chill, son, and I've been taking a dump in the woman's bathroom since I'm five years old. <laughs> and believe me, I have dealt with the consequences. <laughs> 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 and, but he wasn't kidding, Joe. That's what's so funny, man. This guy, it's a shoot. He's being real, and he tells me because yeah, it's well, a you know, shoot. He is pro wrestling. Yeah, lingo. he goes. Well, my mom used to own a restaurant, so you know, I, I kind of had I cleaned the bath, and then I sit down in the women's. He goes, you know what happens if you drop you drop your coke on a men's bathroom floor? No, I don't know, Joe. I don't do coke. What? <laughs> and he, like I've tested positive for everything in the world, but coke wasn't one of them. And he says, you leave it there. You know what happens if I drop my coke on a women's bathroom floor? You get down and lick it up. Oh! That's what he says, but he's trying to say the women's room's cleaner. He's been using them since he's five years old, and he said, and I have dealt with the consequences, which I knew. I want the answer to what those were. It's just, it's like, there's too many other things to talk to this guy, but I gotta get back to the hooker with the wig that he mugged. I've known Joey so for I was busy. 20 years, and he's never stopped running out of stories. 
and they're all real. <laughs> yeah. Like people, his his life is so fucking crazy that people go, oh, that guy just comes on your show and makes stuff up. That's what people used to say when I used to have him on. They used to say like when we first started doing the podcast, you're like, ah, I'm tired of that Joey Diaz guy. He's lying. He's just making things up. Haters would say that. But then people would come on his show and substantiate. He would call people up in in, in New Jersey that he grew up with. They would tell and he would go, tell him that fucking story about the time we lit the, the hookers wig on fire. And then they would tell the same story. Like he's lived a movie, like right. his not a movie, like an epic adventure series of novels. Like his life is insane. Well, to qualify, so he he tells this story about uh, robbing this guy with a machine gun that he yeah. just happened to have, taking the two kilos off the street, doing the cop's job for him, but then having the guy in his trunk duct tape before he moved him to the house before he let him go. He had that guy on his podcast. Yes, he found him on social media, tried to friend him or like him or whatever you call it on face. I'm a Twitter guy, but this was Facebook. Guy ignored him for about two years and finally <laughs> responded. Now Joey's had him on his podcast. He says we catch up about once a month, That's and he hilarious. goes, "Yeah, and the guy was good people. He never." Never turned me in. He said it was the, it was my partner in the whole thing. The partner tried to double cross me. We stole the coke. Then he was going to steal it from me. But I knew what time it was. <laughs> now that's an expression I'd never heard before. But I plan to take with me through through my next years in life. Whenever when, whenever you, I knew what time it was. I just yeah. thought that was a great line. The whole thing was great. I asked him about the gorilla. The gorilla had just got shot where they killed him at the zoo. Yeah. And he says, you know what, Chael Center, they don't give us the good gorillas. I'm, I'm down at the zoo last week. The gorillas, they got their hair messed up. They don't eat bananas. They want chicken cutlets. Shoot the effing gorilla. <laughs> and it's like, th you had no idea I was going to ask you that. That was so spontaneously funny. You know, that news had just broke. And I, right then, I was like... This is the guy. This is a funny guy. No, he's unbelievable. He's the funniest person I've ever met in my life. He's the funniest comedian I've ever seen in my life. Well, I've, I've never seen, seen him live. Uh, you got to see him live. 